Hello and welcome to Dynamic Medicos. In this video, continue the topic of fracture. So in this video, I am going to talk about Cullis fracture. In the previous video, I have talked about the fracture's classification, its general management and introduction to fractures. Now let's move ahead with the Cullis fracture. So what is Cullis fracture? It's a fracture at the distal end of the radius at its cortico cancellous junction about 2 cm from the distal articular surface in adults with typical displacement. It's a common fracture in the people of about 40 years of age and particularly common in women because of postmenopausal osteoporosis it nearly always results from a fall on an outstretched hand what are all displacement seen in the coulis fracture first is impaction of fragments second dorsal displacement third is dorsal tilt Fourth is lateral displacement, fifth lateral tilt, and sixth is supination. Injuries that commonly associated with Cullis fractures are fracture of styloid process of the ulna, rupture of the ulnar collateral ligament, rupture of triangular cartilage of the ulna, Rupture of the interosseous radio ulnar ligament causing radio ulnar subluxation. Now, let's see the diagnosis of the Cullis fracture. So, what are the clinical features of the Cullis fracture? First, is patient will present with pain, swelling, deformity of the wrist, and on examination, we can see the tenderness and uh, irregularity of the lower end of the radius is found and uh, typical dinner fork deformity is seen radius styloid process comes to lie at the same level or the little higher than the ulnar styloid process what are the radiological features it is important to differentiate it Cullis fracture from other fracture at the same site which is Smith's fracture, Barton's fracture by looking at the displacements. The dorsal tilt is it can be detected by looking at the direction of the distal articular surface of the radius on the lateral x-ray. Normally it faces ventrally. If after fracture it faces dorsally or becomes neutral a dorsal tilt has occurred similarly a lateral tilt can be detected on an anterior posterior x-ray normally the distal articular surface faces medially if it faces laterally or becomes horizontal a lateral tilt has occurred most displacement can be identified on x-ray Smith fracture is the reverse of Cullis fracture. This is uncommon fracture and seen only in adults and in elderly people. Its importance lies in differentiating it from the commoner Cullis fracture which occurs at the same site. It differs from Cullis fracture in that the distal fragment displaces ventrally and tilts ventrally. Treatment is by close reduction and plaster cast, immobilization for 6 weeks and complications are also similar to those of Cullis fracture. And Barton's fracture is an intra-articular fracture of the distal radius. Here the fracture extends from an articular surface of the radius 
to either its anterior or the posterior cortices the small distal fragment gets displaced and uh, carries with it the carpels depending upon the displacement there is an volar barton fracture which is anterior type and the dorsal barton fracture which is posterior type treatment is closed manipulation and the plaster cast open reduction and internal fixation with plate may be required in those cases where closed reduction fails it may be considered as an primary choice in young adults with significantly displaced fractures now let's see the treatment for the culis fracture most importantly conservative type of treatment and in undisplaced fracture immobilization in a below elbow plaster cast for 6 week is sufficient and for the displaced fracture standard method of treatment is manipulative reduction followed by immobilization in the culis cast techniques of close manipulation is the muscles of the forearm must be relaxed either by general or regional anesthesia the surgeon grasps the injured hand as if he ha- he was shaking hand the first step is to disimpact the fragments which have often been driven together this is achieved by firm longitudinal traction to the hand against the counter traction by the assistant who grasps the arm above the flexed elbow some displacement are collect- corrected by traction alone the surgeon now presses the distal fragment into the palmar fraction complications of culis fractures are stiffness of joints finger stiffness is the commonest complication the shoulder wrist elbow are the other joints which commonly get stiff this occurs because of lack of exercise and uh, can be prevented by actively moving this joints the joints which are out of plaster should be moved several times a day mal union a culis fracture always unites but uh, mal union occurs in the large proportion of cases the causes of mal union is redisplacement of the fracture within the plaster so that the dinner fork deformity results there may be limitation of wrist movement and uh, forearm rotation subluxation of inferior radio ulnar joint shortening of the radius because of the impaction of the distal fragment leads to a subluxation of the distal radio ulnar joint the head of the ulna becomes unduly prominent wrist movement especially ulnar deviation and uh, forearm rotations are painful and restricted carpal tunnel syndrome this uncommon complication occurs a long time after the fracture unites rupture of the extensor pollicis longus this is an extremely rare complication and occurs long time after the fracture has united it is either due to the loss of blood supply to the tendon at the time of fracture supplying blood to a part of tendon 
Thanks for watching the video. If you want to know more about fracture, you can click on the i button on the screen. And if you are new to my channel, then please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel Dynamic Medicals.